was a long time ago, longer now than it seems, in a place that perhaps you've seen in your dreams. For the podcast we are announcing here is unlike any others you are likely to hear. You've probably wondered where podcasts come from. If you haven't, I'd say it's time you've begun. For podcasts are the result of much fuss, work, and tears. For the geeks that create them to fill up your ears. Well, quite simply, you see, that's all that they do. Making one geeky special especially for you. So download right now the holiday show and learn what your two favorite fanboys know. It's not at all rubbish, not twaddle or reek. It's just Loop and Larry, Guardians of Geek. Boys and girls of every age, wouldn't you like to see something strange? Come with us and you will see, this our town of Loop and Larry. In a world filled with intergalactic space battles, metahuman destruction on a global scale, and psychopathic serial hauntings, there's only one team who can make sense of it all. When your world is overrun with rampant pop culture, call Loop and Larry, Guardians of Geek. Yeah! <laughs> I sang. That was my singing debut people right are, there. People are already talking about it. It's, it's, is it trending? Yeah, it's charting really? already. Yeah, Billboard. Have I got a hashtag? I just got, I just got a call from Billboard. Really? <laughs> it's like, yep. Is it hashtag Larry Sings? It, it's bubbling under oh. right now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that won't be happening again then. <laughs> and Sunrise is coming to the bargain bin already. Really? Yeah, exactly. No, I've, I've dropped the $2 great. already? What a, like, that's a wow. bonus. When you get some Larry singing off the top of the show. It's, yeah, a little bit of something. It's a holiday special, no, you that know? Is, that is, that <laughs> what is do a we bonus. Do during holiday specials, we tank. Yeah. <laughs> we bring out the worst possible stuff. There we go. <laughs> well, it is, of course. Uh, it's December now, yep. and uh, Christmas is here. So, um, I was thinking, and I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you this question because, right. as a kid, of course, like a lot of the greatest toys of all time that are even being remade now, yeah. are were kind of out or started when we were kids. Yes. So you're talking the 80s and, and late 70s, and so I'm gonna ask because uh, it's Christmas time. Is there any Gifts or any, or sorry, any toys as a kid that you didn't get that you always wanted, and was there any toys that you had that you loved, and it was like one of the coolest toys, and everybody was jealous of you? Uh, I start with ones that you had that I had. Yeah. Okay. Well, so it wasn't so much a jealousy thing because I think my friends probably all had these things too, but I remember one of like the mo- one of my earliest memories of getting a toy that I just like freaked out about and just thought was just the- one of the coolest things and it's so simple but it was the original 1978 uh, Darth Vader action figure in the package. And I actually have a photo of me like holding it up. Oh, I was yeah. so excited to get Darth Vader because he had like a vinyl cape and the extendable lightsaber. Yeah. Um, and I remember like playing with him, just, just him for hours and hours, thinking that that was the greatest thing that I had ever received. Was just a little, a little, I don't, I don't want to hear about you playing with your extendable. Oh, come on. <laughs> This is an innocent story. <laughs> That's how big was it? Was it like a regular? It was one of those like you know three point seven five inch like it's yeah standard. yeah like the regular size. Yeah, it was like the original Kenner Darth Vader action figure. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, yeah, it was pretty cool. I was I don't know I must have put it on a list or something. I don't know how my parents figured out that, but I oh, was that's I was pretty excited about that one. The yeah. um, for me for the one that I had, which was also Star Wars related. Um, do you remember? Um, I think this was actually available most places, but uh, do you remember like consumers distributing? Oh yeah, this is a, if you're not not from Canada, it's a, it was a store at the time that you ordered from a giant catalog. And the store was more just a pickup location. It, it was, really, yeah. So, but they also had, I think they had some sort of deal with Kenner at the time. Okay. Because they had, like, different things. Like, so, for instance, they had the ca- cantina sort of, like, where it had, like, the- Like the playset? set? The whole th- the, yeah, the cantina really? play set. Okay. And I had a fair amount of things from, from that from that, um, from that that series. Right. But that was one of the cooler. They also had, like, the uh, sand crawler. Oh, wow. So the sand crawler, so the, they could, you could move the people up and down inside the sand crawler and yeah. everything else. It was really cool. But the one thing I had, and I think this is available most places, but I, I for some reason I think it would associate with that. Um, I had the Death Star, 
You had the Death Star? The Death Star was... I didn't know anybody who owned the Death Star. I had the Death Star, wow. and it was so cool because it's three levels. Yeah. The bottom level had the um, trash compactor, which right. actually turned and, and... And did it have the, the trash compactor monster in it? Yeah, it had the monster. What? And it had, like, in, for the garbage, they had, like, little foam cubes. Oh, that's very awesome. edible. Is... Very edible, by the way. <laughs> um, they... <laughs> awesome. And then, like, then there was the second level was sort of, like, the command center. Right. And then the third level, I think, had... Um, one of the... What was the loft? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, the third level had the giant like gun like that would have oh, shot right. a planet. Yeah, yeah. And then they also had in there there was a um a, between the second and third level there was like a ramp that pulled out. Okay. So it was like the Luke Skywalker where he'd oh, swing. So, oh wow! It was this it thing was had everything. So cool. Like wow. it was like the coolest thing. Yeah. Um. The uh, which this will lead into the thing I never had. So I had a lot of Star Wars. Like yes. I had like I was an only only child. So and lonely. I'm um, only and lonely. <laughs> um, but I, no, I was an only child. So I had a lot of like the Star Wars stuff. So I had like two X wings. Oh. I had at least three tie, tie fighters. Wow. I had like tons of like, I had about probably I'd say seven stormtroopers. Like oh. I had like, I had the whole set. Yeah. The only thing I never got was yeah. the Millennium Falcon. Re- well, that was like the most coveted thing. Like that was, yeah. like that was rare to know anybody who actually owned the Millennium at least Falcon in my world that, that owned it. I didn't know any, I don't, I don't think I ever knew anybody who owned that. Yeah. And it was so cool looking yeah. and I always wanted to get it, but that was the only thing. Like I, I had like, all these, I had the droid factory. What? But I never had. <laughs> you I, went for the droid factory before well, the Millennium Falcon? When you're a kid, you just get what you're I given, guess, right? that's like, true. Someone bought me the droid factory yeah, one year. What, are you going to turn it down? No, yeah, it's I'll, a droid I'll, factory. A, that was the dumbest of the Star Wars <laughs> It really toys. was. Did you have that one at nope. all? Nope. I was not interested in, in building droids. It was. I wanted was my droids pre-built. So dumb. <laughs> yeah, no, it was dumb. It didn't even no. like work right. Like no. it was, They're all supposed to like be able to... Clip the gathers, so you could clip a, like a C three PO body into an R two D two head or yes. whatever it was, and it was. But most of the the droids were all like the R is it R five D four? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like those ones, like so they're all that style or they are R two D two style. So yeah, I just remember there being a big hook. Like yeah, there was a hook. Yeah, that, there was like, a hook. You could swing around, which and nothing it, actually attached no, to it. So, so I don't what know, was that for? I don't know why that was uh, there exactly, no. but uh, but yeah, I had all these like. Kind of bizarre side things, like, but, uh, like, I had, like, the, uh, where, you know where Luke Skywalker on Hoth, he's hanging there, and they yeah. had, like, I had that set. Really? I had, like, like an actual Hoth, like, battle set, like, that was, like, for- Oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. With the it, white, like, the snow, yeah, and, it, yeah. and it had the, the gunner, the, like, um, the yeah. gun turret. I had that, dude. I had, like, every, oh, yeah. I did not have the Millennium Falcon, and that was wow. the only thing that I did not have. So, is it the kind of thing, if you were to go into, like, a toy shop, or, a, I mean, like, a comic book shop that sells- Toy, like old toys. Is it the kind of thing you would seriously now at your age consider buying? I would consider it. Really? I would consider it. Just to have it. Just, just to say just in your it. lifetime you owned the Millennium Falcon. Now, toy. all the toys, someone may ask, where are all these toys? I was just going to ask you that. Well, when I was in college, I needed drinking money. <laughs> And so Typical. In, in, the, in the meantime, between when I kind of stopped playing with the toys and when I was in college, uh, my which mom, was only about a week and a half. Yes, pretty much. <laughs> uh, my my mom lent all my toys to my cousin and that, and a lot of them got broken. Oh. So a lot of them were like useless, anyways. Like I mean, there's still stuff that was pretty intact and that, but like it'd be like the. Um, X-wing fighter be missing the like the the canopy the canopy oh. and stuff like so. Anyways, I just sold it all and really? uh, for how and much? I think I got almost four hundred dollars. What? Yeah, and for someone in college, I'm like, oh man, and, and wow. I probably blew that money within seconds. Oh, like, I'm sure you did. That's actually not too bad. Yeah, considering like if things were broken or whatever, that's not too bad. But if you got that, then could you imagine what you could get now? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I had nothing. I had a few of the original boxes, but I oh, like wow. a lot. Like I had the Bespin box, really, like the Bespin fighter, like yeah, that, that double, the, the Cloud City car, yeah. Which yeah. I don't know really know what that did. <laughs> the, the, no, it just transported <laughs> just, people in just, pods. Just flew it was around. A pod car. <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, so that was that's my uh, wow. Millennium Falcon story that I never got. So. That that is such a shame. Well, I may have to. And I know you're gonna like, feel bad because a spoiled kid didn't get the Millennium Falcon. Yeah, exactly. um, <laughs> Oh, I don't bro, know how who? bad I don't know how bad I can feel yeah, for you no about one that. Feels bad for yeah, me, you don't anyway. get you don't get to buy it now either. <laughs> <laughs> what was yours? What was my Oh, yeah, so my back in the day, I mean, obviously Star Wars was a thing, but back in the day I I became obsessed with Atari. Um and I loved Atari and I didn't have one, but my neighbors 
like the kids who I grew up with, they had one. So I'd always have to go to their house and we'd play and we'd play Missile Command and Defender <laughs> and all of these super awesome games, you know, Space Invaders. And it was it was a thing I always wanted to get, but they were super expensive back in the day. Like they were yeah. really so it wasn't until like the end of grade eight when I when a friend of mine was selling his Atari and seventy games or no seven. sorry sorry no thirty thirty games 30, okay. for seventy bucks. Wow. Yeah, okay, that's a good deal. And so I I went I went for that deal and and got it. But but it was like a couple of years of just like all I could think about was playing Atari and having to go to my neighbor's house to do it. And so I eventually got it, but it took a long time to get there. Do you still have the Atari? I still have the oh, I nice. still have the original Atari, and I got really good at um, soldering the Atari because those little switches that you you have to you'd have to switch on and off would often like stop working. Right. So I got really good at taking the the, the thing apart and like resoldering the uh, connections. Oh, the connections, together. yeah, the wow, connections. Look at so you. oh yeah, I was all about the Atari. I knew <laughs> I knew this thing inside and out. And then, and then you started that failed Atari uh, fixing business. Yeah. That- <laughs> <laughs> it really lasts very long. No, that didn't really pan out for me. <laughs> but yeah, I kept and I still I still have it. I don't know if it would still work or not, but I do have the like modern day like all in one box Atari where it like comes with like a oh, hundred right. games already yeah, built in. Built, it's yep. so funny they could do like a hundred games built into this thing, and yet back in the day it was yeah. like all those cartridges. Exactly, and... and it's half the size and it plugs right into your TV. So I do have that. And I actually do every once in a while like pull it out and plug it in and That'd play be it. Cool. I, I still I should get that actually. You really should. And the Millennium Falcon. No, you shouldn't. Okay. No. (laughs) (laughs) Well, how about we uh, move on to some news? Hey, let's do that. Here in this holiday season. No, that's not it. Hey, what's going on? No, we're not. We're not ready to walk yet. I want to go walking though. (laughs) No. Okay. Walking comes later. Talking comes now. Everybody, calm down. Here it is. (laughs) What's hot? We'll tell you what's hot. It's the Loop and Larry Pop (laughs) Five. Now that we're supposed to be, it's time for news. <laughs> Apparently, Mr. Clicky over here oh, just clicking God. anything. <laughs> when it when it comes to the end of the season, we just we, we don't even care anymore. <laughs> we're just, just hit anything, stuff. whatever. They all kind of look the same. They're <laughs> yeah, just a exactly. bunch of icons no, on a computer. Nobody's yeah. gonna know the difference. <laughs> so we got the see. This, I was explaining this. We have okay. the pop capacitor. That's what yep. I've named the one. Yes. And the other one I named the pop five. So oh, it's like God. I could have named it. Why didn't we just name something completely different? We because didn't... because everything is pop with us. Yeah, we're just pop. Pop <laughs> doesn't matter what it is. All right. Pop. Let's let's get into this. All right. So news. Let's start right at the top. Uh, just uh, a day before the recording of this uh, podcast, they released the very first trailer for Black Widow. Yeah, I'm which, excited about this. Which is pretty cool because everybody was so sad when uh, when Black Widow. Like took took the dive in in Endgame, <laughs> and we're never gonna see Black Widow Spoiler again. Spoiler alert! Sorry, <laughs> but now she's back. That's right. So this is the first movie of Phase Four of Marvel's Phase Four. Yep. So we're moving into that now. Some people have complained that why are they starting with a movie of a person that's dead? But yeah, there's, like, I, where can you go from there? Yeah, I the feel. Question. Strongly, yes, that there's going to be something in this movie that's going to lead into phase four. Like, there's going to be something that's going to be gonna, a villain or, a or, or or something, or someone yes. from one of the other movies that's going to be introduced in this movie or something, yeah. Um, years before the, they actually debut in this, so it'll just so that it sort of has a, a reason, yeah, to, to exist. Well, it wouldn't be in phase four unless it had a reason, that's right. And, and to kick off phase four, especially, so yeah. Here, here's my question I just don't remember did Hawkeye make it through Endgame? <laughs> he did. So I'm wondering if this has, if this new movie may have to do with that um, uh, Afghanistan experience that they had. Remember, they talked at one point about how she and Hawkeye had this experience, and yeah, uh, I, I wonder if there's maybe so, and then maybe Hawkeye. Well, this something? this takes place between Civil War and Avengers Endgame. No, oh. so it's sort of like it's her going back to Budapest, like kind of where she lived. Oh, and so it, her family is a big part of this, right. like yes. as well. Now I don't know who's going to turn on who and what's going to happen with all that. But, but will Hawkeye be in it anywhere? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone could be. In it. There's rumors that Tony Stark's in it. Really? Because he'd be alive at that well, point. Of course. So um, who knows what what they're going to do with this? Yeah. And. Uh, um, obviously, before it's pre-snap, so none of that would have happened, yeah, right? Like, that's or, right. or actually, no, no, it's before, no, it's before Infinity War. It's, it's before yeah. Infinity War, so it'll be fine. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see what happens when uh, in 
uh, what they're doing. But I, I like the style of this trailer. It looks to me like uh, like a James Bond movie. Yeah, it's like a spy thriller. It's more totally like a spy. That's thriller. what I love about Marvel because they've got their like ridiculous heroes. Yes, that, and then they like an Iron Man or whatever. But then they also have these like these street sort of level heroes that fight it beside them that don't really necessarily have these crazy powers. Yeah, or any powers. Yeah, but it makes it more <laughs> exciting so that everything's these giant battles. Yes. Like, you know what I mean? So this is more based, I think, a little bit more in reality. Yeah. Um, this is, and I think she goes back to where she was originally trained and, and uh, or be forced to be trained. Yeah. Um, so it's it's pretty cool in that way. And uh, the one of the villains in it is Taskmaster, which I'm excited about. Now, in the trailer, you see him just briefly come out of this top of a car and he's oh, shooting. Okay. Um, does not look anything like the Taskmaster from the comic. I'm a little oh. disappointed, but maybe that's just a suit of armor he's wearing or something. Right. So, so the Taskmaster in the comic is basically this mercenary. He wears like a hood and stuff. He's got like a um, like a shield, but his face is like a, a skeleton face. Not I don't know if he actually has a skeleton head or if it's just a mask. But right. It, but it, it's a skeleton head. And, um, is he like a uh, Ghost Rider? He kind of looks like Ghost Rider, but with an actual cool costume. Oh, like, okay. <laughs> so, but the thing with him is that he can mimic anything you do. So if if you're like a master darts player, he just by watching you, he can learn how to do that. Oh, cool! So, That's a cool technique. Yeah, but if he if you're fighting, so you have a cool certain style. cool fighting style, he yeah. he can he mimics it and, and remembers it, and oh. he can. So he's very hard to beat because he can like match you move for move. Right, right, cool. So just That's by good. watching you. So That's a cool. That's yeah, a cool it's, thing. he's really cool, and he's really sarcastic in the comics. Like he's he like. Uh, he's just a bit of an ass in it, like oh, you know what I mean. Okay. So I don't know how he's going to be portrayed in this, but in the comics, he's kind of funny because he's a mercenary, right? Like, yeah. hey, you pay me enough money, I'll be there, kind of thing. So cool. He's, he's well, cool, cool. He's a very cool villain. I've always yeah. liked him, but we'll see what they do with him and how they ruin him in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a, there's a lot of potential here, is what you're saying. Yeah. The thing with yeah. Marvel, though, they tend to keep it pretty close. Yeah. Like generally, because I know yeah. fans will like. Not like it if they go too far off yeah. that particular. Although they they were pretty far off the base with the Mandarin. That they were, but yeah. I guess he wasn't really the Mandarin. So <laughs> I, I guess they, and the Mandarin's they supposed it. to be in this in this new uh, Shang Chi movie or whatever. Oh well, so, there you go. So we're gonna so see the real thing. Yeah, so you'll they're okay. gonna have the real one in that. But uh, and then David Harbour, of course, is in this one. Playing, oh yes, and he plays the Red Guardian, which is like a Russian Captain America, but yeah. but much past his prime. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> the suit is tight. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited just to see like a Marvel trailer again and and. It, I just sort of the cool thing is I can kind of wipe out everything that's happened and start anew. It's start that's afresh, right. right? Like yeah. even though it's an old character, we kind of know. Yeah. I don't think everyone like I know she's supposed to be dead, dead, dead. But I I feel like because Captain America in Endgame went back and kind of replaced everything that they had taken back in time. Yeah. She could maybe be come back to life. Well, I mean that's the way it is with comics, right? Yeah. Nobody's well, ever she, dead. She died in the comic <laughs> and came back to life. Everybody, and, nobody dies ever in the comics. Yeah, so, <laughs> so I mean, they can they can find a way. If this movie makes enough money, yeah. she will be alive She's again. Coming I back. can guarantee you. <laughs> yeah. <so. laughs> well, and the thing is, is that if they're going back and and telling stories like between movies, yeah. they could make an infinite number of of movies of adventures and things that happened before. Oh yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. So like you know, she may not catch up to where they are now and today but there's plenty of stories that we can still hear yeah i think i think it's gonna be cool but i i strongly think because this is phase four that someone's gonna be introduced or something's gonna happen in this just to to kind of start that phase out because they're not they're not gonna have this movie and have it no connection to the rest of the phase it's got to have some reason to be there right so it's gonna be pretty exciting and also another trailer came out Oh yeah, the this, newest, the new Bond movie. Th- that theme gives me like goosebumps every time I hear it. I was so excited about watching this trailer. I just, it just like was is so nostalgic. Yeah, this is this is oh, one of the great. So I'd say great. this is one of the close to like I'd say easily in the top five theme songs of all time. 100 percent. Like, let's let's hear a little bit of it. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. And the and I love the fact that they never changed it. Yeah. Like it's still pretty much what it was when Dr. No came out. Like, I mean, it was, it it's just, it's just so classic. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it's one of those ones that as soon as you hear it, it's kind of like Star Wars. As soon yeah. as you hear it, you picture everything going on. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, it's so good. Yeah. And you can just anticipate what a Bond adventure is going to be like. Yeah. It's just, and, and that's what this trailer felt like to me. Like, it was like, 
we are back 100% in the Bond world with this. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we were going to do this podcast the day earlier, and because of some uh, some child snafus that I had, <laughs> but, uh, but it worked out because the Bond trailer, we had, we already knew of the, the, the teaser, teaser trailer. Which came out the, the trailer day before the this. trailer, yes. yes. But th- then, we, then luckily we was able to get this because we really wanted to talk about the, the actual full trailer in this. Yeah. And, and so t- to me, this looks like it's it's taking place directly after Spectre. Yeah. Um, because Blofeld is in this trailer. He's locked up in this awesome cage. Yeah. <laughs> um, so he's in that there, there are characters that appeared before. It looks like a continuation of the story, which yeah. was which it, is great. And it might be a few years later, I think. It, it could be, because, yeah. Because at one point, um, Q says, oh, I thought you were dead. Like, it, it seemed yes. like they, they didn't know where he was. Like, he's kind of went off, he was off the map a bit. Like, yeah. so. And, and they're. Off the grid. Off like the grid, off is, the like grid the, is what you meant to yeah. say. And they're really alluding to the fact that he's, like, on his last legs. Like he's yeah. he's beat up, he's done. And the fact that they've introduced a new 007 or yeah. a double O, sorry, they 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 didn't say seven. She they, he just said, Are you a double O? And she said, Yeah, I've been yeah. a double O for two years. Yeah. She said it just like that. Um the <laughs> that fact is, that they've introduced that perfectly a new one, it was. Done, it was man. very bondish, wasn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. Um they <laughs> um that they brought her in and she is awesome. I'm really excited to see what she's gonna do. I, I yeah. think I, I don't remember the name of the actress who plays her, but yeah, because at one point great. there, I thought people thought she was gonna be the next Bond, but I don't know because they're still talking about. It. It's always like I see stories all the time about who's the next Bond. Like uh, yeah, and I don't know either. And there's it's, no reason Bond can't be female. I like no. the idea of the 007 just being like that's you're just called James Bond or whatever. Yeah, you're not. That's not your real name, but that's just what they call you in the like. Yeah, his name could have been like Peter Jones, <laughs> and then they just got the re- like a pseudonym. Yeah. from you know, uh, and that's just that's just what they're called. Uh, yeah, like, and then all the 007s are yeah. James Bond. <laughs> yeah, that should be I, interesting. I, I, but... That's what I like. So it's like yeah. Um, but this one looks cool. It just again, it's like. It, they make these trailers look so cool. Yeah. Like, I do remember though, which one was it with where they were in the? I think we might have been talking about this earlier, but the one where they were in the house and and uh, Skyfall. Skyfall. That was slow. It was slow. I really liked Skyfall. I liked but it. It, it it's, was it's yeah. cool. He, I, the problem is, you see these trailers they are all action packed, but you got to remember these action sequences. It's like action sequence, a lot of like exposition, yeah. then action sequence, and then yeah. like it's not like it's action, 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 no. action. Not very few, few. Some of them are, but not all of them. No, I mean, they, I think they they stopped doing that when uh, Pierce Brosnan was uh, was. <laughs> what was the James one where Bond. he was driving on the ice? Was that die another day or yeah, one no, of those uh, ones? It was like yeah. the, it was so over the or, top. D- Tomorrow never dies. I think. Yeah. I think maybe. I don't this remember. is one of the few bonds um, with Daniel Craig that, like, with this, like, I guess I call it an arc of the five apps, the movies he's been in. Yeah. That didn't get more and more ridiculous. Because yeah. Because almost all of them start. Like even Roger Moore started. Yep. He was pretty serious in his first one. By the end of it, he was just like, Whoa. Um, yeah, Moonraker. <laughs> and yeah. Like, like it was just, driving cars underwater. But, and... but that was that time period. Everybody, yeah. everything was one liners. Yeah. And so he had to have like these like. Once they saw, oh, if people laughed at that one liner, then it was just one. It was just like a Freddy, like a Nightmare on Elm Street movie, yes. right? It was just one liner after one liner after one liner. It's true. So. And even the even the villains back in the day got sort of more ridiculous. Like, yeah, you know, I mean, um, what was his name? Well, there's Jaws, obviously. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, I, no, I can't remember the guy who who threw his hat. Who oh, had, odd job. Odd job. Yeah. Odd job. You know, I mean, there's things like that. But the villains now are like scary villains. Although yeah. this villain in this. Movie is really intriguing to me because uh, it's Remy Malik. Yeah. Um, but there's, he's wearing a mask, and his face is all scarred. And what's going on there? Like yeah. this is because he does. He is in the trailer at one point. You yeah. See his face. You see his face, but you also see him with the mask on, and that's kind of cool. It's kind of cool to have like a like a mysterious Bond villain, not just like a regular dude. Well, um, and I was like, why is Freddie Mercury in this? <laughs> like, what, what's he doing in this? That's like from the uh, makers no. of <laughs> Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> I thought they were gonna try and tie it in or something. No, like. no, no. You, you, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just, I just think it looks great. And of course, like they shot it all over the world, so you, you're gonna see locales that probably we haven't seen before. Oh yeah, it's gonna, uh, be, it's gonna be awesome. And so, so I think it comes out April. April of 2020 is what uh, I think that's the date. Yeah, that sound right. Yeah, yeah. April eighth, twenty twenty. Oh, there you go. Very specific. Look at me on yeah, the. Look on at the you top. right there, <laughs> Mister Mister Dates over here. Mister Dates. <laughs> and by the way, the uh, just to go back to the first one, uh, May first, twenty twenty will be the uh, will be Black Widow. Oh, okay. May. All right. It's well, gonna so be April, like that's April, so we got, eight, we got April Bond. We got Black Widow in May. Is this gonna, yeah. Next year is gonna be packed with movies. It is. It's, it's gonna, gonna be awesome. It's gonna be. It's starting out to be a good, pretty good year. Oh pretty, yeah. <laughs> um. 
Speaking of new movies that are coming out, uh, they've also now announced that there will be a new Evil Dead movie. When we just when we thought the Evil Dead was finished because <laughs> Ash versus Evil Dead was done, and Bruce Campbell has said that he will no longer be playing Ash, and that'll be the end of that, and we're all very sad. Apparently, nope. They're making a new movie, and Bruce Campbell is producing. Oh wow! I know. So it's a totally different take. So, so. Is, is it going to be like a? If he's producing it, I would assume it's just it's like a reimagining. Of I, it or? I'm guessing. I'm guessing it's a reimagining. Maybe, uh, maybe there'll be a new family member of his that becomes the new Ash. I don't know. I'm not yeah. sure how they're going to do this. Nor do I know where. Like if it's going to be a like a Netflix type movie or if it's going to theaters or where it is but I think it's just kind of cool that that Bruce Campbell is still attached to attached, it attached and they they haven't let this franchise go cuz Ash versus Evil Dead is was fantastic. Did you ever watch it? I watched the first season in a bit and yeah. then I just like, it's one of those things we start watching like you know those ones just, that you just kind of casually watch. Yeah. I just never finished it. Ca- kind of like the Dark Crystal. It's sort of like that. No, the Dark Crystal was <laughs> was recommended to me by somebody. <laughs> but and, sometimes you uh, just start things and you don't finish them. That's you know, totally I, I, normal. This has nothing to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> for the Evil Dead, but I actually finished all the Dark Crystal. Really? I, well, because I was like, I got to finish it now. I got to find out what happens. And, and, and did you like it? it? It looked great. Okay. It looked great. All right. <laughs> it, was, it, it, was, it, was, it was very convoluted. Yeah. Like, but I, I do suggest highly that you watch it. I, I, have, I have every intention of finishing it. And maybe probably restarting it because it's been a while. So I, I fully intend to do that. Mark my words. I will, I will finish I'm this. I'm going to check in every podcast to see where you're at until you finish oh, this thing. Because you made me watch it <laughs> with, your, with your high like, expectations on it. Oh, man. All right. I'm, high I'm praise. In. I'm in. I'm, From I'm Larry. Gonna be, <laughs> you won't believe any praise I give anything anymore. I know. After well, this. I already did because there's a lot. I can list a fair amount of things well, that you've given high praise to. That's and probably like, true. But usually I'm right. Sometimes twenty five percent of the time, I'll <laughs> no, give you. It's not bad at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, moving on. Another movie. This, this is like, this is like almost an entirely a movie uh, pop five this time. Well, stuff just kept coming out. Like we're it like, did. oh, it's, now this has been announced. It's crazy. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's number four. Number four is uh, Ghostbusters. The new Ghostbusters mo- movie has a title. It's called Afterlife. Nice. It's that's a great title. It is I, a good title. I think it's a great title. Unfortunately, we have yet to see the trailer. It's coming out. During this week when we're recording, it hasn't come out yet. We were hoping it would have dropped by the time we recorded, but it hasn't. Well, um, I did see a preview of it. Um, the Ghostbusters are in it. <laughs> oh, God. No. I'll just go now. Yes, you should. I'm just going to handle it. It is now called the Larry, Larry Guardians of Geek. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but, but you're right, actually. All the Ghostbusters are in it. <laughs> we could probably talk about it so generically that it would be like, oh, yeah. it was, oh, ama- I cannot believe this. You, you, wasn't it amazing to see the, uh, the uh, Acto One? Did you oh, see yeah. that again? Acto that was, One's back. Uh, oh. And then they had ghosts. Yep. Do you remember? Did you see all those? And most of the original cast has returned. Yep. And, it was uh, terrific. <laughs> and the fire station was referenced. Somehow, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna nail that's this. My, that's this my claim good. to fame. Is I actually I went I went on a tour in New York and I saw the fire station. I did too. Yeah, it was awesome. But we weren't together. At the no, same no. Time. But it was cool. It like, was, it was cool. really cool. Yeah, yeah. That was really neat. It's, I'm really hoping that it is actually in this new movie. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it, hopefully it will be. But the uh, but yeah, it's cool that they have a name for it now. It comes out. Because I didn't know all the dates, July tenth, twenty twenty. Excellent. So there we got a May, an April, May, and a and, July. And a July. That's it's calendars filling up. It is. Oh <laughs> man. So yeah, no, it's gonna be great. It's, I think gonna, it's be gonna be great. Be... And but this whole title like leads to all kinds of like questions about what this could mean. Does that mean like could it be that the Ghostbusters are taken, are killed, and are taken to the afterlife, or is it? Like, are they retired? And so now it's like, what happens to them after their life as a Ghostbuster? Well, I know, I, <laughs> That's I'm a bit of a pretty stretch. sure this is a, a reboot of the series with them. Oh, I thought it was number three. Ushering, it is. But, but I, I, re, I mean a reboot in that they're ushering in a new group of, of Ghostbusters. Oh, okay. But it, but it, it is like, it's, like the it, first yes, two. They're not yes. forgetting about the first two. No, no, no. Okay. It's, it's them. It's just that they're, it, it, it's a way of... Kind of doing passing a launch pad, yeah, right. uh, passing the torch, a launch pad to another whole new right. series of Ghostbusters. Which, which is what what the Kristen Wiig uh, version was supposed to be a couple of years ago. That didn't really pan out. You know what? I think that one got a bad rap. I did too. I, I didn't think it was that bad. I thought it was really. Go- I actually quite liked it. I thought it was. I thought it was fine. But yeah. everybody was so down on it, and I think like I just sometimes I think people get all like the only thing that was missing 
it was the original Ghostbusters in it because yeah. they they weren't playing themselves in it. No, or... they weren't, and they were all in it. Well, uh, uh, Bill Murray, I don't think. Oh no, no Bill, Bill Murray, Murray was, was in it. it. Yeah, yeah, they were all in it. Um, but yeah, they were playing other people, which was a little. Like it took you out of the movie because yeah, you was, saw them and you're like, "Hey, there's Winston." No, he's they could he's have easily uncle. done this exact same thing with the with, yeah. with them, and I hope at least one of them makes it into this new movie, like yeah. as a character. But I thought they, I I really enjoyed it. I thought um, Chris Hem, Helmsworth was Hemsworth was hilarious. Oh yeah, he was the Andy Potts, right? He, and yes, like, yeah, yeah, he was the nerd character. Or I just thought he was. I really, I really enjoyed that movie. I don't. You know, there's a lot of detractors, but I yeah, I like my Ghostbusters. Yeah, I, I don't thought, care I if they're they men or women job. or anybody. Yeah, I thought it was they did a good job with it. I, I don't know why everybody was so down on it. Like it's I just, don't either. But I, I just think the only mistake they really made on it was not having the original Ghostbusters in yes. it. Yes. Because then they could have totally passed the torch. Yeah. And then, and then we would have had a new group. But exactly. maybe this one hopefully will be maybe a mix of guys and girls maybe or something. I assume, like, it, I assume it will like, be. Like I think that yeah. would be, I, I, that would work out perfect. Yeah, I would assume good. it will be. And we can't forget that the Ecto-1 is in a shed someplace. So yeah. it's on somebody's like at somebody's house. Yeah, you know what I mean. So maybe there'll be family members or something that take over. Yeah. I don't know. Who knows? Who, well, who, if well, you had to, because we don't know who's in this, right? Uh, well, no, and other than the original Ghostbusters, yeah. no, and Sigourney Weaver and Annie Potts, who, like they're all you, back. Who, do you, who would you think would be good in it? Who, like, other than the originals? Yeah, yeah. If, if you were passing the torch Ooh. to a new group. Who do you uh, think would be good? That's a that's a tough question. My, my first my first thing is I would not pick anybody that's super young. No, you don't want to see it become like a like a, a teen teenager. Yeah. No, no, they've got to be like established, and it's almost like a like I don't want to say Will Smith because I I don't think I'd want to see Will Smith. No, he's, as I think, he's I think, done too. He's done the Men in Black thing, and I, I'm not sure. That, yeah, but somebody like that, like somebody who you believe could like literally pick up a. Um, you, you know, and and carry on the whole Ghostbusting tradition. So I, I'm not, I don't know who would you. Who, I don't know. I, you know who I think would be good in it, but I, not maybe as like the main main guy, but yeah. someone who I think is super underrated is um uh, his name's escaping me, but from Community. Um, oh, uh, uh, Jeff Winger. Like oh the, oh really? oh yeah. He's got he has that. I love him. Like yeah. I think he's just got the right. Hale, Joel Joel McHale. Yeah, Joel McHale. He's yeah. got the right like amount of like sarcasm. Yeah. That that could be a good care like one of the four. I don't think like the main guy. I think you no. need a much bigger star as sort of the main. Yeah. But as one of the side guys, I think he'd be great. Well, like, and that, and that's the thing with this is that the, like the four originals were sort of all on par. Like yeah. I, I mean, Bill Murray always stands out just because he's Bill Murray. Bill Murray's but, the biggest star by far. But in that, he yeah. but they all pretty much played like at the same level you know what i yeah, mean yeah. like dan Aykroyd and and they all they all played sort of at this at the same level which which was kind of cool so you kind of have four leads yeah you know so i think a joel McHale would kind of fit in really well with that yeah I, I think he's i think he's underused is, as, is I, he available i'm can, pretty sure he was just we... on the mass singer the other day so i'm pretty sure <laughs> that, he is he's got available. nothing else going on yeah all right but, but i'd like to see maybe some more of the like the saturday night live like yeah people on, in it like um, maybe from like the last few seasons or, or yeah. whatever. I think there's at least a, uh, some room for. You know who I could see in there? Who? Little Horatio Sands. Possibly Horatio. You know, Sands. he'd be funny. Um, I think he could. I think he could pull off of the the comedy uh, side of it and still be uh, believable as somebody who wants to bust ghosts. Yeah, I, I think so. <laughs> I, there's there's definitely some people that are that are on, like that could be in this for sure. That yeah. would be, be a lot of fun. But uh, the the unfortunate thing is, by the time uh, you're listening to our podcast, the trailer will be out and you'll know exactly who's in it. <laughs> yeah. and we'll be all wrong completely. So <laughs> I mean, we're probably wrong on everything. We don't know. We haven't yeah. seen the trailer. We're no. just we're just speculating. <laughs> That's right. That's what we do. Speculating That's is most what we of do. what we do in our yeah, lives. There's lots of speculating, speculating happening. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. And our last pop five piece of news for today is uh, going back to the Star Wars theme because we can never leave that very far behind. Wait, hold on. Oh, oh, you got it something? It's Larry talking some Star Wars. <laughs> talking some Star Wars. Here's your Star Wars news. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just found that and I'm like, oh yeah, you should use that again. Yeah, no, you really shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, you're gonna be hearing that a lot, you yeah. know. Um all right, so <laughs> the the big news that just came out. I don't okay. <laughs> dumb, that is the dumbest thing. Okay. It really is. It's really dumb. But it's good. You know that the Star Wars news is coming. It's, well, it's effective. It is. All right. <laughs> all right so Disney Plus is going to be launching a new Star Wars show because that's what they're going to be doing from now on. And this one is actually a game show, and it is called Star Wars Jedi Temple Challenge, and it is a kids' game show, game show for kids. 
So yeah, that's happening. <laughs> uh, okay, without knowing anything that happens on this, oh, for, who hosts this? Um, it is hosted by. Uh, oh, now I can't remember his name. Um, he played Jar Jar Binks. Yeah. Um, it's just completely lost. Uh, completely left my brain. Um, Ahmed, Ahmed Best. Okay, Ahmed, Ahmed Best. Best. Okay. Yep. okay. It's all right. You don't have to remember everything. Uh, well, no, right. I know. There's a lot going on in my brain right it now. Is. But um, <laughs> okay. and, and really, most people have forgotten about That's him. Right. So <laughs> I, would, I felt always bad for him because it's yes. like you get stuck with this character that he, I think he did a great job with. Yeah. Unfortunately, the character, I don't feel 100% fit yes. into that universe. Maybe in the first movie you could get away with it. After that, it was like, I noticed that he got less and less as the movies went on. Yes. But it was just an annoying character, I generally. think that was the problem. But, yeah. I mean, the, the problem is that people hate him because he played it. Yeah, but and that's he not just fair took to a him. job. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's just getting paid, man. Yeah. All, so now, but he's back in the universe. So oh, that's, good. that's good. So let me read you a little so this, bit about this This is going to be canon, by this the way. Is, yeah. This is absolutely, <laughs> this is what Jar Jar's doing now. He's, yes. a, he's a game show host. <laughs> right, well, that sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this is, uh, it's, this is definitely a kid's game show like no other, says Lucasfilm Senior Director of Online Content Programming, Mickey uh, Cap- Capoferri. The various challenges will test a Padawan's connection to the Force in three locations. A forest planet, on board a Jedi star cruiser, and inside a Jedi temple, immersing them in the and the audience in fun, humorous, and exciting competitions. So that's what this is. All right. So I this, think it's a kid's show. It's probably gonna it be is. fine. It's probably I, it's probably gonna look cool. I well that's the thing. Like it could either be super cheesy and really like but or it could be really cool because it's got these cool sets and locations. Yeah. And I feel like anything that they do Star Wars related now, they are going to like dump a truckload of money onto it. So I think if nothing else, the sets will be really cool. I mean, you might get some obnoxious kids in there, but yeah. you know, I think there's there's potential to it, for it, something it, like to this. To me when I hear a show like this, I feel like it's just, it's just a a filler cheap yeah. filler show to put on Disney Plus. Exactly, that's really what it is. Like, it's like, but that people will be like semi interested in because it's Star Wars related. Yeah. Now, I, the big question is going to be: Are people going to get really angry because this is sort of selling out? Like, this is you know now Star Wars is a is a kids game show. Like, you know, is that okay? Star Wars sold out a long time ago. <laughs> this is not like new. Like, I think you know what? I think anything that's like. It's entertainment. It's kids. I, yeah. I, I don't see any problem with it. I mean, it, yeah. it's, I think it'll be, they'll make it interesting and I, I think, think it'll so. be kind of fun. And we're not the target market for it. No, as much as we, no. th- as much as like 35 to like 50 year olds think we're the target market yeah. for every Star Wars thing, we, we are, are not. not. No. no, we are not. So, but you know but we will be watching it. Yeah. And if, if you have young it. kids, they'll watch it. Like, yeah. why not? Like, it's, it's actually like, probably a good like gateway for really young kids to get into the Star Wars universe because they'll you know spend time and they'll get all excited about these different locations and and i think you know i think it's going to be good i think it's going to be all right so it is coming i believe in 2020 so awesome that, so that is that's, a, that's another thing we can look forward to yep 2020 <laughs> is going to be a big year <laughs> big year so that's our that's our top our pop five for our this official pop five yes for, for this uh podcast and so after the pop five we always have a couple there's always a couple things that we have keeping our eyes on or something that we yeah. maybe noticed could be fresh and new, may not be. We don't know. It's just whatever whatever we're interested in in these couple weeks. Because as you know, as a geek, you're constantly moving and changing, and different things are interesting you. So this week, I want to talk just uh, briefly about um, a new show. Uh, now you've heard of the Toys That Made Us. Yes, it's on Netflix. Great show. Yep. Um, so the first season they looked at Star Wars, Barbie, uh, He Man, and GI Joe. Yep. Second season was Star Trek Toys, Transformers, Hello Kitty, and Lego. Yep. The new season has Ninja Turtles, mm-hmm. Power Rangers. My Little Pony, which I know you're a big brony. So oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Big and, brony. and professional wrestling. <laughs> I already feel like they're running out of toys. Yes, at, I know. At, at this point. Yeah, what, what else can they so, cover in this? Well, what they can do is start yeah. another side series yeah. called The Movies That Made Us. Smart. So this just debuted. Um, uh, it looks pretty cool. Yeah. And I think they have a lot more to choose from in this. Oh, yeah. This, this thing could go on forever. So the movies for this first season are Dirty Dancing, Home Alone, Ghostbusters, and Die Hard. I'd say those are the movies that made us. Uh, that yeah, made us. Not, maybe say, not all of us, but maybe, it made us. <laughs> but there are some of us out there who are made I by these movies. I literally just watched Dirty Dancing for the first time like earlier this year. For the first time? I'd never seen Dirty Dancing before. What? I've seen tons of scenes from it, but I've never like really? watched the whole movie. Like, 
Wow. So, anyways, it didn't oh. make me, but it was. Uh, <laughs> what did it make you do? <laughs> well, my wife made me watch it. Okay. <laughs> but it, I never. I, wow, interesting. Yeah. Okay. But did you. Has, have you watched any of the episodes? I watched Ghostbusters. And how is it? It's good. Yeah. So, so you know how the style of the toys that made us is? Yeah. Where they're like, woo, and they're whipping around and yeah. everything. It's the it's same sort of thing with this. Okay. Like, so they'll, someone will say something and they'll go to like a reaction shot of the person, like, obviously was didn't know they're on camera but they were doing some weird face and they go right. back that so, kind of stuff it's co- it's cool like it has a lot of like some stories of like uh that you maybe didn't know about the the movie and it talks it kind of runs through how it got made how it almost didn't get made oh. um like uh like Dan Aykroyd's in it like oh. they have some good um uh good interviews in it right. and uh it also has the um uh, it, it tells like how how successful it was and and the launch of it and how it like and how it sort of seeped into pop culture. So it right. even it even goes it has Ray Parker Jr.'s in it. Really? Talking about how he wrote Ghostbusters. Oh, cool. And how he wasn't sure. Like he, he's like, how do you sing Ghostbusters and make it sound cool? Like, yeah. there's no and then he he finally he saw like an ad for something with a number and he's like, Oh, that's what I'm gonna do. Calling and that's how the Ghostbusters. Busters. So yeah. then he made it. But uh, but he didn't realize it was gonna be like this monster smash, right? Yeah. So there's little stories like that. It told like who was supposed to be the original Ghostbusters. Really? Really? So they, Dan, it wasn't originally these. No, four. so Dan Aykroyd wrote it, and apparently the first the original scripts of his were awful. So they really? had to re re like they were much more spacey and much more weird. Oh, okay. Um and so it was uh Ivan Reitman's idea to make it more Set in a real world, right? And these guys are trying to start this business. Yeah, so that was more the the collaboration with the two. Yeah, um, John Belushi was supposed to be in it originally. Oh, really? It was written for him, Dan Aykroyd, and Eddie Murphy. What? Yeah, so that would have been interesting. Yeah, so it's it, and then they talked about trying to get all the other actors in it. Yeah, and Bill Murray, who like. They they weren't even sure if he was going to show up the first day, and he showed up on time. <laughs> really? But they were like, they, they, no one knew if he was going to show. They couldn't get a hold of him, and they're like, I guess they thought he had him. They huh. weren't sure, and then he just showed up. He was like there. I, I cannot even imagine what a John Belushi, Dan Aykroyd, Eddie Murphy version would have looked like. I can't. Yeah. All I, all I can picture is is John Belushi as the blues brother. I mean, the, John, yeah. It, I, that would have been really, really different take. I don't know if it would have worked. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. Huh. Like it's 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 cool. Like it's yeah. like it's a cool like, and and the name Ghostbusters. They almost didn't get that too. Like they were shooting it, and they didn't even know if it was going to be called Ghostbusters. Really? So they had Ghost Breakers as, as they like. So they they were shooting twice. Like they were shooting scenes. Anytime anyone mentioned Ghostbusters, they'd shoot it twice to say Ghost Breakers to go say Ghost Breakers. Really? Because uh, another company there was like, apparently a TV show back yes. in like the set called Ghostbusters. There is. Yeah, and they had to try to get that rights to that oh. name and they were having trouble okay. but it was cool you have to watch it to find out how they did get it and it's yeah. really interesting so. Inter- so these are hour long episodes uh about 45 minutes For- okay. 46 minutes somewhere in there so excellent <laughs> i think i would jump from 45 to 46 46 yes, yeah. it's, yeah. it's anywhere minute. in there there's <laughs> that, a big range <laughs> that it could potentially be <laughs> 45 30 yeah. is where we will land on that but, oh. no, but it's it's really cool like, awesome all right well i'm in because i like the uh we're, the toys that made us so i this is a natural progression yeah, there's just some good backstory stuff, and Die Hard lo- looks like they. The trailer for it shows like just little clips of them saying like different cool things about the movies cool. that we didn't know. So that's it's cool. Awesome. Well, I, I'm I'm excited to see how this one goes. Netflix. Netflix. All right. So speaking of streaming services and Star Wars, because you know Star Wars. Star uh, Wars. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> this is not news. Well, it kind of is news. It's not really news. Oh, it's news. Is no, it? it's not. No. <laughs> Uh, so the thing that I've gotten now that now that Disney Plus is is out again, it's it's uh, released all of these shows that I haven't seen in ages and ages, or some that I hadn't ever seen. Yeah. And so I'm sort of making my way through what's there. And of course, I like to see what the Star Wars uh, offerings are. And so obviously there are all the movies. There's Star Wars Rebels and Clone Wars and Star Wars Resistance, which is the new one, uh, which is actually pretty good too. But there's also a show on there, which if you haven't seen before, you really need to take a look at it. It is called Star Wars The Yoda Chronicles. Okay. Oh, you want me to play yeah, something? Yeah, play something. Is that what that points yeah, for? Yeah, it's pointing something at you. Here it comes. Ready? Yeah. For hundreds of years, Yoda has trained the Jedi Knights of the future. Learn and watch. But never for something like this. A disturbance I feel in the forest. A rescue mission I must launch. Oh, a trap it is. A new threat, I sense. The dark side is preparing a weapon more powerful than any Jedi has ever faced. Everything is going according to plan. Excellent. 
Find out more about the Yoda Chronicles. Visit lego.com slash Star Wars. Secrets to reveal. Uh, did, did I mention that this is a Lego property? So so it's it looks like the Lego movie. So all the characters are are like Lego minifigures. Oh, that's <laughs> so awesome! It's funny. This is one of the funniest shows. Really, okay. it's hilarious. It is so well written, and so so it's almost like a spoof of Star Wars. But it's got all the characters in it, and and like they they play it seriously enough that it's like it's exciting to watch. Yeah, but they but they like. Ooh, drop it is. <laughs> so it's just really, it's really, really funny. So there were there are only seven episodes, and each one's twenty two minutes long. It debuted in May of twenty thirteen and went until November of twenty fourteen. So it was really short lived. And like I said, there's only seven episodes. It came out like so. It's once. like a series. It's not like one it's of those one off movies no, that they've done. Okay, it's a series, and it, uh, it, um, like it was hard to find originally because there was like one episode a month. It wasn't even like one a week. It was they were sporadic, and it, it was really strange. I'm not sure why they put them out like that. Yeah. But uh, but anyway, it's it's um, uh, so essentially it's l- like the trailer said. Yoda's setting out to train a uh, new Jedi, but feels a disturbance in the Force and has to face Palpatine, who's creating a new ma- uh, weapon of mass destruction. So that's oh, essentially okay. what the story is, and it does follow the follow an arc. But it is hilarious. Like, literally, as an adult, I'm laughing out loud <laughs> at each one of these episodes. I it, and, and you do sort of need to watch them in order, but it's only seven and they're 22 minutes long. So as, as something completely different, if you still like your Star Wars, if you want something to try something new and a totally different take on it, I highly recommend the Yoda Chronicles. And they're, they're there for you on Disney+. Plus. The, uh, the, all the Lego properties of those movies they do in those series are really good. They're really well done. They, they are really well done and they, they're funny like they're, yeah. i don't know who writes them or whatever but they're they're very very well done I, I have no idea i don't know any of the details about where this thing came from oh, but yeah. it is hilarious like you, i cannot recommend this enough it's i'm just gonna i'm gonna tag on to this for disney plus yeah. um my son started watching phineas and ferb again oh yeah there's, there's a star wars crossover on that oh that's right there's a two there's a two episode one and it's pretty funny like uh, like I, I don't even watch phineas and ferb that much but i, I watched it with him and i, I was forgot like, about that i used to watch phineas and ferb a fair bit actually it's yeah. a really funny show so it was uh but it was it was pretty funny we watched i watched it with him awesome. the two episode arc but yeah Lots this, of Star Wars this, crossovers. There's a lot of Star Wars stuff going on. It's and thank you to Disney Plus for bringing that all out. Oh, to man, us I, it's, I just that thing is just like we talked about in the last podcast, but it is. And we'll so probably much, talking about it again in the next one. Well, because <laughs> it's now a major thing, and yeah. it's like, and it's so much content, and it's hard not to watch it all. Right? Yeah. Speaking of which, and this is just a bit of a diversion, I just read this just before coming up here to record the uh, podcast. The Mandalorian is now the most popular TV show in the world. That does not surprise the me. The world. <laughs> Have you seen the um, the uh, Baby Yoda memes? Um, no. <laughs> I don't know. Is that started now? Baby Yoda memes? <laughs> uh, there was so many. Every time oh, I, I swear to God, I can't go on like Facebook or Twitter without seeing some like <laughs> like GIF or whatever of Baby yes. Yoda. Like, because I, I don't know if they thought this when they were doing it. Yeah. Like like this could be very like gifable or jiff or whatever you want to call them. Yeah. Um. I don't know if they thought that, but like the one where he's like holding the coffee or whatever, the like he's holding the coffee or the soup. Yes. Like that, I've seen that a ton of oh times. Oh my gosh. I mean, they they have walked into a, a gold mine with that baby Yoda. Oh, they're gonna be selling baby Yoda product. Like I don't think that people they can... love get baby Yoda. Yeah. I don't think that they can. <laughs> What's funny is that they didn't have any uh, baby Yoda merchandise. Ready, like they did. First of all, they didn't want to spoil it, so they didn't yeah. release anything. They didn't have an, enough of it ready. They Disney was scooped on merchandise by a by a seller on Etsy, who created a um uh like a plush Baby Yoda that looks like the real thing. Like it's it's amazing, but. Um, this person hand makes them. They're two hundred dollars, yeah. and you have to like order in advance. But th- this this seller was the first person to get out like, any sort of thing that looked like of, that looked really good. So, funny. so now, but now all of a sudden, um, pop vinyls the the have announced the Baby Yoda, yeah. Um, and there's a ten ten inch version of Baby Yoda for pop vinyls. There's uh, it's gonna be like this is gonna be the pop. Uh, this is gonna be the 
Baby Yoda world. Like, well, it just exploded, and yeah. everyone like, like because it could have gone either way. People yeah. could have been like, okay, that's dumb, or yeah. but people love Baby uh. Yoda because they're not the Baby Yoda is not irritating, it, yeah. but it's got a cute factor to it. Yeah. But it's like because it just sort of just does those little things, and everyone seems to love it. Like, yeah. The, my, my favorite uh, merch that I've seen so far was uh, like a handmade T-shirt that I saw online <laughs> that has Baby Yoda's face, and it says. If Baby Yoda dies, we riot. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, yeah, that just about sums it up. That's <laughs> uh, so good. I just, like, I just love how it just that just took off. And, I, and it's always wonder, like, in the background, if they thought, oh yeah, this is going to take off, or yeah. like, I mean, I thought I, they probably thought, okay, someone's going to like it, but not to this extent. No. I think this thing is like it has taken over the internet. And it's it it's is. really interesting to watch how it's done it. Yep, and it will just keep growing and growing. It will. <laughs> time to go for a walk. All right, Here we go. this time walk for real. Off, walk off some Baby Yoda. Yeah. <laughs> And here we go. Okay. <laughs> and and we're, we're back. back. <laughs> hey. Hey. So it's time for the pop capacitor. And today we've got a, uh, I'd say like, a, it's a, is it a Christmas movie or is it a Halloween movie? Um, That is going to be the never-ending debate. All right. Well, let's, let's take a listen. All right. Welcome to an extraordinary world filled with magic and wonder. Open your mind. And let yourself go to a place where every day is Halloween and every night Jack Skellington I am the Pumpkin King! Dreams of something different. What is this? It's someplace new. Touchstone Pictures presents the enchanting story of two very special dreamers and the holiday spirit that brought them together. From the imagination of Tim Burton comes The Nightmare Before Christmas. Wow, there you oh, go. Oh, yeah. That. So I think this movie could go either way, quite honestly. Yeah. Uh, I watch it during Halloween. I also watch it during the Christmas season. I would sometimes watch it in the summer. <laughs> 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 so tell me a bit about the background of this movie. So this movie came out in uh, 1992, uh, and it's funny because it's it's referred to as Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas, but Tim Burton actually produced it. He did not direct it. It was directed by Henry Selick, okay. um, which is funny because everybody forgets that. Yeah. <laughs> Usually a movie is referred to by the director, like it's Martin Scorsese's Goodfellows, or do you know what I mean? It's not, yeah. nobody knows who the producers of these things are, yeah. but in this particular case, I mean, the characters are Tim Burton's creation, and Tim Burton wrote it, yeah. but he did not direct it. So it's funny that Henry Selick has been sort of forgotten about this, uh, forgotten. Uh, but anyway, it came out in 1992, and it's stop motion, so it's not traditional animation. It's stop motion, and Tim Burton has done f fantastic things with the art of stop motion animation, which means everything is real. So it's moved like like millimeters, and then they take a, a couple frames of film, move another couple millimeters. So it takes it's a, an excruciating process. Oh yeah, for sure. But everything in this movie is real. And it's also a musical, if you haven't seen it. And I'm going to be very surprised if people out there hadn't seen it. I was also very surprised <laughs> to know that Loop has never seen this movie. When you suggested it, I'm like, oh, good, I get to finally watch it. Cause yeah, I've, what? I, it's one of those movies that, and again, like it's like a dirty dancing. Like It's like I've seen tons of clips from it. And I just, whenever it came out, I just, maybe it was just the time period it came out. I just didn't have anybody to see it with. Who knows? And then it came out on video and I just, I was always like, oh, I should watch that. Yeah. And never did. And it just uh, kept going and going and going. And I just never seen the movie. And it's like, but I've watched it come out and then I've watched all the sort of, like, especially in the last, like, maybe 10 years. Yeah. The sort of, like, the cultness of it, like, start. And then, like, we were talking before, like, in the, in the store hot topic. Like there's a like whole half of the store. store is like <laughs> Jack Skeleton stuff. I didn't Skellington. Skellington. Sorry, whatever. Yeah, remember, I only watched it once, so I only remember so much of it. Oh. Um, but my like my um, wife's brother Tim is a massive fan of this. Yeah, of so, this movie. I've just yeah. So I am too. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, like huge fan. We have in our living room a Jack Skellington plush who sits on our couch year round. <laughs> <laughs> like and and my wife, my whole family, my my wife, this is one of the, one of the few pop pop culture phenomenon that my wife actually really likes a lot. Okay. Um yeah, so it's a fa it's a family movie and everybody gets into it, but I've I've 
been a, a huge fan of this movie from the beginning. And it's just, it's phenomenal. But it's, like you said, in the last 10 years, it's grown to massive cult status, like massive cult status, yeah. to the point where it was re-released in theaters in 3D and now comes to select theaters every year at Christmas in 3D. So it's like constantly in theaters. It's almost like a like a midnight movie. It's like one of those movies like The Room or, you know, Rocky Horror Picture Show that plays. It doesn't play like that, but every year it comes back to theaters and people will go and see it. And and it's just like this massive phenomenon. People will, you know, wear clothing with Jack Skellington and Sally and Jack, it's just, Ske- it's Jack Skeeterton. I love him. He's so uh, good. Like oh, he's such I, a good I character. can't I'm gonna have to like remove this from your brain because you're not allowed to have you're not allowed to be a keeper of this memory if you treat him like this. <laughs> 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 okay, Jack Schoolington. Okay, no, go on. God, um, no. I don't. <laughs> okay, so as somebody who has never seen it before, yes. tell me about your first impressions. Well, I walked into it and I'm like, you know, you, you see movies and you just uh, you kind of assume what it's going to be like. Yes. And I felt like I don't know why I felt like the characters weren't going to talk. It was going to be all narration or something. I don't oh, know what oh, I was thinking. Okay. Like so, I saw it and I was like, this is really cool. Did like, you Did you know it was a musical? Um, I didn't know that. You didn't know that. Yeah. I, like, but when there were songs in it, I was like, okay, this makes sense. Right. Like, um, the I like the style of it. It was very Tim Burtonish. Like, very like, Tim Burton. Like in the, in its like darkness, like yes. as usual. Yeah. Um, but I love I loved like the look of it. I loved the the songs were fun. Um, the detail, attention to detail, because I. I I appreciate when they do those type of movies, like just the detail in the background. Just the stop motion, yeah. Yeah, because everything has to be created, right? Yes. Like for real on the sets and everything. So um, it just looked great. Like, and I just, I, and then like, you know, the the, the kind of iconic cover of him in front of the moon and that. Yeah, with the twi- spiral. So I'm like, yeah. I can finally see that in action. I'm yeah. like, okay, this is cool. <laughs> this is cool. But I didn't even know what the story was. I honestly had no idea what the story was about. Really? I knew it had a Christmas tinge to it. I just didn't know what it was. Like oh, I didn't realize okay. they had captured Santa. But right. there was parts of it I, I know of, and I don't know why. Like I knew that character that captures Santa and Oogie Boogie. Yeah, I knew yep. him. I've seen him before. Well, I because just, they're everywhere. Yeah, like you I can't go two feet without seeing some reference to. Yeah, and I probably <laughs> seen bits and pieces of that scene. Yeah, but I just never seen the movie. Right, so. right. Well, that makes sense. But I was like, I mean, I loved it, and I was yeah. like, I just never seen it, and I'm like, I I, I bought it. Oh, did you? Yeah, I watched <laughs> it on Disney you. Plus, but I actually huh? bought it on Blu-ray as well. To really? Own it. Yeah. Wow. Well, I have a Tim Burton good. box set. Like, so yeah. when you first said it, I thought I'll just go to the Tim Burton box set because it's probably in there. But it's it, it's not in that well, one. Well, and that's but that's the interesting. It's technically it's not. He didn't direct yeah. it, so it wouldn't be. I mean, he it's the look. Oh, of Oh, that his would stuff. make sense. Yeah, that's why. So I said, he wasn't the director. Corpse Bride is in that. Co- he directed Corpse Bride. Oh, I've never seen either. But we, really? Yeah. All right. Well, I know what our next pop capacitor is going to be. If you like Corpse Bride, is not a musical. So, yes. so if, if you're not a big fan of the musical, you, you get the same style, the same creepiness as Nightmare, but without the music. It's yeah. re, it's really good too. Okay, I'll check that out. You should. Um, but uh, a couple of interesting little facts. Uh, the the right at the beginning of the movie, there's a a narration um, when you see the trees. Yeah, they're spinning into the. That's Patrick Stewart. Oh, is that really? Yeah, oh, that's that was cool. Patrick Stewart who was uh, giving that little narration at the beginning, which is kind of interesting. And the narration actually continues uh, a fair bit beyond what he what we hear. Yeah. Um, but they cut it off for the for the movie. The rest of it you can hear on the soundtrack. So the, if you want to hear more of what Patrick Stewart says, you can go to the soundtrack. The other interesting thing is Jack Skellington was actually introduced for the first time during Beetlejuice. Um, there's a scene in Beetle. So Beetlejuice was what, 88? Yeah, somewhere in 88. Yeah. yeah. So this is like four I've years. I've never seen that either. Yes, you have. I'm joking. Okay. I've seen that tons of times. I love Beetlejuice. Is amazing. I was literally about to walk yeah, out. Yeah, no, here. no. I, I love Beetlejuice. <laughs> okay. It's great. So the scene in Beetlejuice. So four years before Nightmare Before Christmas came out, Beetlejuice. The scene in Beetlejuice right near the end when Beetlejuice, it, where they're, they're, Beetlejuice is trying to get married to, um, uh, Winona Ryder's yeah. character. I can't remember her name. Yeah. But they're they're doing the wedding in the house and it's all very Tim Burton y and, and creepy. And he comes out of the floor uh, and he's got like a carousel hat on his head. Do you remember oh, what yeah, I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah. And it turns around. On the very top of the carousel is Jack Skellington, Jack Skellington's head with his with the bow tie that's a bat. Yeah, is right on the top of, of, of oh, Beetlejuice's cool. head. So yeah, so Jack Skellington was technically introduced Four years before wow. in Beetlejuice. So that's, that's pretty cool. It is. Uh, yeah, I, there's a lot of stuff. I mean, he, of course, the Danny Elfman, like he yes. sang the songs in it, right? Yeah, so Danny Elfman did all the singing, and um, 
Uh, Chris, Sarandon. Chris Sarandon was the voice. Yeah, and I didn't uh, know that Catherine yeah. O'Hara did the voice of the. Not until like I looked up it on IMDb like midway through the movie. I'm like, oh, that's she was that's, Sally. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it, they had a lot of big names um, doing doing like participating in this movie, so it, it did have a like a you know a lot of pedigree, a big a fancy pedigree coming into it. But uh, but it was just it was so unique. It was so. I don't think anybody had seen anything like this yeah. uh, when it first came out in, in 92. So, I mean, of course, since then, there's been Corpse Bride. And then um, Studio Laidka has released, like, Coraline and yeah. um, Paranorman and those movies. Yeah. So I think that, that the success of Nightmare Before Christmas launched all of this sort of um, resurgence in – in stop motion animation, yeah, because it had gone away. Like, I mean, you you didn't really see. I mean, I think before that, it was the California Raisins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Like, I, yeah. probably. I, and Will Vinton, like Will Vinton. Remember in the eighties, Will Vinton did a lot, he did the California Raisins. And yes, yeah, yeah. Did yeah. a lot of that stuff with clay and claymation. It was called yeah. claymation at the time. Oh, that's right. Um, but uh, yeah, so it wasn't really until this movie that people started kind of going, oh, this is pretty sweet again. And then all of these other movies are happening as a result of it. So it's 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 been super influential yeah. as far as, like, movie making goes. But uh, but it's just, it's remarkable how it's 20, what, 27 years uh, that this movie, since this movie's come out, and the popularity of it is just keeps growing and growing and growing. Yeah, it's, it's weird to watch because I, 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 like, because I, Notice when things are like culty, right? Like yeah. I notice that, and I know I see this stuff everywhere, and I'm like, man, why have I not watched this movie? Like, yeah. but I enjoyed it. I was like walked into it knowing nothing about it, um, other than Tim Burton was attached to it, and I yeah. didn't realize he didn't direct it. So that was that's news to me. But yeah, the, um, but it was cool. But I didn't realize how well it did because it was like it grossed over seventy six million during its initial run. So that back then that would have been a lot of money. Yeah, if you adjust um, that for inflation, that'd be. Yeah, substantial. Yeah, it'd be like pretty close to like a lot like big movies now. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, nominated for an Academy Award for Best Visual Effects, mm-hmm. and that was the first time one's been nominated for an animated film at that point. Okay. So, um, in the uh, and then it's been reissued a few times, like you were saying, like yeah, 3D and stuff. But it's like, yeah, it's, it was good. Like I didn't realize how big it was at the time. But I'm yeah. like, how did I miss this? I like, <laughs> but sometimes it's just who you're running with at the time. Yes. Like as far as like your friends and who wants to go see it and like, yeah, it, things just slip by and yeah. Like for example, I've never seen Jerry Maguire. That's I find it hard to believe. I I've seen it like probably like ten times. <laughs> I right? know. It's just people see things and they don't see things. So yeah, you know, I, I can see. It. I, it's easy to do. Like it's just yeah. it's like well, like I was saying, like Dirty Dancing, I'd never seen. But no. I mean, it's not the type of movie I'd go see. No, number one, and then it's just it's like I felt like I'd seen it because I'd seen so many clips of it. Yeah, so. so there's no need to actually like sit down and watch it. Yeah, yeah. So okay, so now having seen this for the first time, would you rate this movie a Halloween movie or a Christmas movie? I read it a Christmas movie. Yeah. Because I, cause I, I feel, feel because like, the, the Christmas it's, I feel like it's a Christmas movie, but these characters are in that Christmas world. Like yeah. it's, it has nothing really to do with Halloween other than they're Halloween based characters. Yeah, but and they live really, in Halloween town. It, it's really <laughs> yeah, it's really. But I mean, it's really the story of them trying to steal like or take over for Santa Claus. So yeah. that's really the plot is a Christmassy plot. It is like it's not really. It just they just happen to be Halloween characters. Yeah, like, it's in, it's in the, this world. the whole idea of like what if one hol- ho- holiday took over another holiday. I mean, it could have been an Easter movie. Maybe he went through the Easter tree or yeah. you know what I mean? Like it could have been anything. So really it was about it was about Christmas and what what would happen if some other holiday decided to invade yeah. that you and, know and, just, and try to take it over. Exactly. So I, I feel I feel strongly it was a Christmas movie. Yeah. And it was I think what was cool is that it's like the polar opposites. So you've got Halloween, which is like all about demons yeah. and scary, and you've got Christmas, which is beautiful and light, and and yeah. it's the clash of the two, and it you, you just can't. And, and, and they're two <laughs> holidays that really go back to back. Like it's kind of yeah. like everybody builds up the Halloween. Halloween's done. November first, Christmas launches. Right. Pretty so much. Yeah. They're very interesting holidays, and in that they're so yeah, like you're saying, they're so opposite, but yeah. Um, and, and you could see if this was the real real world that <laughs> that people in Halloween Town would be like, okay, we're done. Let's let's move on. Let's see what else we could do. You know, yeah. it just it was a cool, it was a really cool concept to to come up with this. Uh, I was disappointed Krampus didn't make an appearance because uh, Krampus is the only dark part of of Christmas. That is true. That is like he could have came and helped out. But yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. He could have been the he could have been like the mediator. 
Yeah. You can, you can go between. <laughs> we just want to have a sit down with Krampus, Santa, and Jack Skellington. See if we can work out a deal here. <laughs> that would have been. That's the sequel. Yeah, that's that's the next one that's going to come out. Yeah. Um, the, but no, I I'd say like if we're talking about if it stands up, stands the test of time, it definitely does. Yeah. Like even if I didn't like it, it still stands the test of time because. Yeah. Just the merchandise alone that they're probably still making off this movie is incredible. It's true. Well, and I mean, they they also lucked out with the quality of music. Like the songs that are in it are really catchy. Like they're yeah. they're good. I mean, they're kind of like the Lion King or Frozen or do you know what I mean? Like they yeah. they came up with an, like an incredible amount of songs that are that will last. That yeah. people are still able to sing and you know. I mean, that could have ruined the movie if the if the songs were weak it, yeah. that would it would have sunk the movie and, and like, but of they course, I've only seen it once so I don't really remember any of the songs right but, of course but they, but they were catchy when I was listening to them I'm like yes. oh this is kind of cool but yeah. I will definitely watch this movie again because yeah. I, I like this might become a like a Christmas a tradition. tradition absolutely and a Halloween tradition yeah. maybe even a summertime tradition I don't know about Halloween tradition but oh. I definitely see I always I'll, watch it during Halloween yeah see I'll keep it in the, in the Christmas in the Christmas era the Christmas oh, era yeah. and you then just, I will you just wait give it another 27 years and you'll be watching it all year round <laughs> <laughs> well I just purchased um, the uh, what was that movie? It was like oh, I can't remember the name of it. I just purchased it like today. Um, the the one that's uh, banana splits like the oh horror the movie. horror movie. Yeah. Oh no, that would be my new Christmas tradition. Have, have you seen any of it? No. Oh, it's I haven't watched it all. It was on, I, it was on sale at Walmart, and I, I'm like, yeah, I, I, that's why I already forgot about it. When I, I was trying li- to come literally, <laughs> I literally could not get through it. I was so excited about this movie because I love the banana splits, like the original banana banana splits. Yeah. I, I really liked the show, and when I heard it was going to be a horror movie, I was like, I could see that. These this is super creepy. Yeah, I, they spent probably like one tenth of their budget on the actual costumes. Oh yeah, the uh, <laughs> I it was dirt cheap, and yeah. I'm like. All right, I'll get it. And obviously, I already forgot the name of it. Yep. That's, how, that's how good it is. But the, uh, but yeah, no, I had to get it. So that's yep. might be my true tra- 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 tradition. We, we, we may have to review this one for the pop Mark capacity. my words. In twenty years, you're going to be seeing a hot topic <laughs> banana split shirt based on this movie. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to mark any of those words. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, it's a good place to end the show. I'd then. say so. Okay. Yes. Anyway, that's that holds up. It was awesome. And uh, who knows what we're going to do. So how many shows? We'll probably do maybe one I think, more. Yeah, I think we've got one more for for uh, 2019, and it's the big one. It's our uh, best our and worst of year-end or, reviews. Or, as we're discussing this, or do we do one more show to cover Star Wars, and then in, oh. and then in January maybe we'll do our year-end show. That might be too. Yeah, yeah so I think I think Star Wars has to be part of the year-end. There will be, yeah. Whether we do a year-end or we may – but what you, can, what you can count on is that Loop and Larry will be doing a special – edition of Guardians of Geek the day after uh, Star Wars launches. We will be yeah, putting we together We're seeing it first, at the same time. Yeah, first so. reactions. Uh, so you will be getting a bonus episode of Loop and Larry Guardians of Geek, Star Wars exclusive. It's and then in January, awesome. I'm going away for a week, first week of January, but when right. I, upon my return... We're doing a best and worst. We're doing a best and worst. Oh, we may have some yeah. guests in the studio. It's yeah. going to be good. We're going to take a look s- back at the year that was. That's right. And, and talk about the year that will be, maybe. Mm. Uh, this next year already is looking awesome. Exactly. It's going to keep us in business for another year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If the movie industry ever dries up, we're at we're out of well, business. We're kind of done. Yeah, we're and it could done. happen. You know, <laughs> people are getting bored of movies. Maybe they'll just fold up shop. Eh, we'll see. Eh, we'll see. <laughs> that's <so> dumb. <laughs> So that's the show. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, remember, check us out on all the socials, and uh, we'll see you next time. By Matthew C. Loop and Lawrence Simner. A Loop and Larry production. Bueller. He likes it. He likes it. Bueller. Bad news. Fog is getting thicker. And Leon's getting larger. Inconceivable. Brian's right. It's an elf. Wax on. Does Barry Manilow know that you raid his wardrobe? Oh, Captain, my Captain. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. Wax off.